Oh wow, that's a lot of damage. Welcome back to the joy of welding everyone. I'm here at my in-laws house where my father-in-law Valen told me that I could help fix his deer feeder here. Seemed he got a little bit of punchy on the gas with this deer feeder in the back of the truck and sent it out the back tumbling down the deer lease road. We have a lot of damage here as far as to the shell of this piece of sheet metal galvanized wonderful stuff. We've already done the liberty of taking most of the damaged area out with a cutoff wheel just so that we can see exactly what all that we can replace the cheapest way possible. I hope the deer don't care. We sure do have lovely weather for this. We got a nice little mist pouring down. Let's go ahead and assess the damage a little bit more. We've got a lot of troubled areas, but our only requirement for this project is that, that this lid fits over top, just so it holds corn and no moisture gets inside. So we can also kind of tell that there are some other pieces that may need attention, some things that are missing rivets. We might go ahead and fill that in with weld. We also have some bent pieces down here we might push that up and try to fix it and some other things that are just bent out of plumb or out of straight however you want to call it just from tumbling down that road now one thing that I noticed is how this is put together this is all one piece as it comes into this corner it comes in folds back around and then folds back around here all the way out so that it grabs and holds this that's what holds these corners in place at least just that corner and that corner. Now, while I do wanna maintain most of this, I am gonna cut it down to where we're gonna remove it, remove this little bit of extra metal that's in my way, just because we're gonna put full weld seams on there on all sides. I've got a piece of galvanized 18 gauge material today, and we're gonna utilize this to just slap it on right here. We'll start by removing this little bit of material down past where we'll have the sheet metal overlapping not only this spot but these corners as well so that we can avoid getting any moisture inside so i'll cut down just about as much as i think i want all the way across and remember this is one piece and we don't want to get rid of everything we just want to remove what we don't want and from what i gather we might have to just cut this little corner right here it's going to be a tricky cut And there we have it. We have the piece that we wanted to remove. I think that'll do. The main reason why I didn't want to cut all the way down it is as you can see, this piece is now separated from this piece. And while we are going to squeeze these back together and put a nice weld on there, we might have to do that twice. Just to re-weld it, blend it back in and make it look like this little edge all the way down. On second thought, we're just gonna go ahead and slap this 3M Cubitron disc back on. I love these wheels, they just cut into anything and we're just gonna remove this little piece of extra flashing we really don't need. Perfect, we don't need that. We'll go ahead and take our mighty manipulator here and we just wanna help kinda line up a few things before we try to fit up this other piece of sheet. I'd like to see some of those waves and wrinkles taken off, but it's okay if we don't. We're gonna cover a lot of these problems. Again, I hope the deer don't mind. Now I'm just gonna pull a couple quick measures. Obviously this sheet is a little bit excessive for what we need, but it was cheap. It was a drop piece from my local metal supply. This sheet of 18 gauge only cost me around $18. All we want is for that edge to line up properly, but we do want about an inch and a half of lip on the top so that we can fold it over just like these other sides. Now with these other sides are folded a little complicated, I just want the one fold across the top and we'll make sure it's seal welded properly. And as you can see, we'll line up the sides and this was gonna overlap quite a bit. We only want maybe an inch down here of overlap so that we don't need all this material. We'll have to make two cuts on this piece of sheet with our cutoff wheel. Now we know the bottom of this box is about the original width that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that measurement 28 and 3 16 if we want to get down to that 16th. I'm going to go ahead and make sure the back side coincides with the front side. 
we're within a sixteenth of each other, it's likely something's gonna be off because it did take that tumble down the deer lease road. So we got 28 and 3 sixteenths. Again, measure twice, cut once. I think we're gonna try to shoot for 28 and a quarter so that we make sure that we have that same height all the way up. If you notice at the top, we're not even close to even 28. So we can see that this is bent in. We'll have to bend things out as we come from the top. So the goal now is to have an inch and a half or this distance here, which is oh, about an inch and a half. Would you look at that? Inch and a half down to overlap, line up with our cut mark all the way across. We'll have that overlap tacked in. As we work up, we'll tack to these sides and get to the top and we'll have that flashing bent over about another inch and a half. So that's good. Our total height, about 16 inches. But we're gonna go ahead and add that inch and a half on either side. What's, what does that add up to, everyone? That's right, 19 inches. And just so I don't forget, we'll go ahead and put that down. 19 by 28 and one quarter inches. Perfect, now we can't forget. Now let's pull our measurements. Now our piece of sheet metal is only two foot wide, so we're not gonna be able to get that 28 inches this way, so we'll have to go that way. I like to mark on something that's galvanized with typically a marker, something nice and dark, but we won't be able to have any success with all this water that's on this piece of sheet steel. So I went ahead and grabbed any old rag that was in my father-in-law's shop. We went ahead and dry off this material at least about how far we plan on cutting back. I'm gonna make two marks on either side, a 28 and a quarter. Doesn't matter where exactly, just as long as we have two closest to each end. If you notice that it's not marking good, you probably didn't dry it off enough, just like I have. We wanna make sure it's nice and dry so that we can make those cuts. So we've got our 28 and a quarter, and then we want our 19 long, 19 inches here, and 19 inches here on the end of our material. Now that we have those, all we need is a nice straight edge. It doesn't even have to be a square because we should have our lines squared up. Excuse me, Mr. Hammer. Again, I don't need to put the square on the edge. It's probably a good habit to have. Put a nice clean mark this direction. This one's a little trickier. I'll push it, push it more on my bed so things don't flop around on me. We want this measurement to be right on the chili because we don't have a lot of play with that width. And we're gonna go ahead and mark the inch and a half where we're gonna make our bend as well. Oh, where'd that silly tape measure go? There you are. I'm gonna count a little bit more than an inch and a half, maybe that sixteenth or an eighth of an inch to account for that bend that's gonna be in the material. <laughs> that bug just hit me right in the lip. Let's put our final mark. I'm not worried about the inch and a half overlap at the other end because that's more of a random distance. All right, let's get to zipping. Making cuts with a cutoff wheel can be really risky business. We want to make sure that we're taking proper precautions when we do it safely, because these wheels can jump and bite. And when we get to the end of our material, we want to kind of give something as far as, uh, you know, holding it a little bit so that we don't pinch the blade at the end of the cut as the material tries to drop. Nice to have a little bit of a clamp, but since I'm working on the bed of my truck, it's not a problem. We want to mainly just let the wheel do all the work. See how at the end of the material, it didn't really want to cooperate, the blade kind of got pinched, and we put a little bend on the corner. That's why it's always important to go ahead, grab that material, make sure it doesn't fall, or have a plan for that when it does. Now that the material is cut to size, we want a nice good pair of gloves and a flap disc to go ahead and prep this material. Sheet metal can be super sharp, and we don't want to cut ourselves. And you almost always will with these sharp little burrs on the side, so we want to get those little rascals off. Not to mention this is galvanized sheet and we're killing two birds with one stone. As we remove this edge, we can clean and prep the material to weld on. Nice. 
This step will make things easier to work with, hold, move around, and weld. Let's see how our fretment was. And it looks like we're not gonna have quite that inch and a half that I thought, but we can always bring it up as we do have play on the bottom side here. And then we'll fold this side over so that we have some coverage. Fantastic. Now we do have ourselves in a funny little situation. I don't have a break or really a good way of bending this sheet metal, but what I do have is a bit of redneck ingenuity and some time to kill. So I've got myself a nice piece of wood and we're gonna offset our line just by a smidge as we wanna compensate for our bend, but not by too much. I'm gonna try to line up the corner of this piece of wood and then we'll take us a little rubber mallet here. Isn't this gonna be fun? You wanna work your way up and down as you do just a terrible job of bending sheet metal. Let's try this way. I'm sure you viewers at home are really enjoying this and are just cringing as you watch. Well, this is probably one of the worst ways to do this. It still gets the job done. We wanna put a lot of our hammer pressure right in the corner to get that nice hard bend. And then we can make everything a little bit more even as we just keep hammering. Good morning, neighbors. All right, let's check it out. Woo wee, I don't love that, but it's gonna do for what we've got going on. Son of a, I bent the wrong side. I'm breaking character now, this sucks. God dang, that's loud. Dude, you bent the wrong side. Remember kids, just remember what you saw here today. Let's bend that other side, F***ing idiot. I wish I could say that was a happy little accident, but that one sure did piss me right off. Let's do that again, but on a much longer and more difficult bend. Now that we've got that simple step out of the way, I'm just gonna lay this on here, and as you can see, this is pulled way out, this is pulled way in. What we wanna do is just focus on the bottoms, get things touching, and then we can tack things together and then work our way up. So closing these things off, we're pulling the sheet metal anywhere that we can. But first, as we know, galvanized has a zinc coating on it and that puts off toxic fumes. We are working outside today, so it's gonna be just fine for us as long as we keep our head out of the smoke, but we do wanna grind a little. It makes the welding a little bit easier. I wish I knew where my welding cap was. I've been looking for it for this whole time. I must have misplaced it, but this has been on my head the whole time. Well, let's just add to the silliness of this video. Alrighty then. You'll start to notice whenever you get down and past the zinc coating, you'll start to see those carbon sparks. As we get started on the galvanize, not a lot of sparks, right? But as we push in and get through that coating, you'll see those sparks coming off your grinder and that's how you'll know you made it to that carbon steel and clean metal. Be careful on sheet metal though, this stuff's already thin. Now after a much needed break and a little bit of some lunch, we're ready to get started with the welding here. Now we've got this overpowered Rebel 285 IC for the job. It is definitely one of the bigger size models of Rebels that you would need to do something simple like this. So definitely check out the other size Rebels. We're also underpowering this great machine by plugging it into 110. It does have those capabilities, but we've gotta be kind of conscious of what we're capable of using just the 110 somewhere around 16, 16.5 as far as the volts and around 115 inches per minute, only because we're running 035 size MIG wire. Now that's some big meaty wire. It's gonna get the job done regardless. Anywhere we see a big gap, we're just gonna wait. But if that metal is touching, go ahead and put a little spot tack there. 
That pesky GFCI just keeps popping. What a pain in the butt. Make sure if you're gonna run a welding machine in your shop or garage, you at least have a 30 amp breaker for those 110 plugs. But we went ahead and put a tack on here. We're just gonna give our little manipulator some love to close those gaps, and then we can squeeze, pinch, and tack. Careful about your fingers and not to burn them. Well, that first side guy's done lickety split. Now we just gotta tack this little happy side together, line up everything. I'm gonna use my chest and push into it. Safety squints. Doing that little bit of trimming on that sheet metal so the deer don't recognize that didn't fit up right. So now it's looking like we've got everything tacked down nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. But we don't want any of the moisture or water to get in or that corn to get out. So now we've got to seal weld this whole thing. Oh, this is going to be fun. Let's see how far we can make it without tripping this GFCI. Little downhill weld. Let gravity do everything. We're going to weld very fast. Oh wow, we've made it a lot further than I already anticipated. PU, look at all that galvanized. That stuff right there is all that junk that you want to avoid. We're going to move from section to section, only welding from tack to tack, moving around so we don't distort or warp the sheet metal too much. We're doing our best to push the speed. If you push a MIG weld, you'll get less penetration than if pulling. And we're not looking for a whole lot of penetration, so we're gonna push these. We're just gonna dot it on up. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to hold corn. Now we're gonna do our due diligence and just clean it up a little. I would grind down all these high spots and try to make it look nicer, but again, I don't think the deer give a shit. There's our outside corner weld. Well, a couple little pinholes here and there, but you gotta let it breathe. Seal weld everything across the bottom. Some good welds, some bad welds, everything in between. This whole side is now sealed up. And we came down here and patched a couple legs, fixed a little hole right here and pushed that up and held. Everything is all together. Now this was galvanized to begin with, and remember when working with galvanized and welding on it, you do want to do your due diligence and make sure you have a respirator, a nice cool breeze in the spring air, or a fan, something to get those fumes away from you. We've got some cold galv spray, and we're going to go ahead and touch up all of our surfaces to make sure that they keep those galvanized properties. We might just add a little extra camo on here since it is a different color. Let's have fun with it. You really want to work your wrist in the right figure eight motion. Really throws off those deer. And if you put a nice R with an X on it, it keeps those raccoons out. Let's see if our lid fits. There we go. That's all that my job was to do. Fantastic. Gee whiz, I sure am happy that's over with. Some of these projects that you're gonna do aren't always gonna go as planned and things are gonna happen that are really gonna frustrate you. But you just gotta keep that hood down, keep that grinder rolling, and just finish the project so you can say, hey, I did that. Again, thanks for watching everyone, and 